I'm not the lovable bookstore manager in New York, or the shop clerk in LA, or the doting husband in the suburbs, no. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things to remember before watching you season four. I just want my little European holiday back. For this list, we're looking at what to keep in mind for the return of Joe Goldberg in Yu's fourth season. Spoilers ahead for seasons one through three. Are you excited for season four? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, from Natalie to Marianne. There you were with your books and your sunshine. So close, but worlds away. I will figure out a way, a way to get to you. See you soon. Season three of You picked up where the end of season two left off, with Joe creeping on a woman through the fence. I still believe in the one, that the right person is out there for me. We later find out this is Natalie, his newest obsession and conveniently his next door neighbor. It's really nice to have an actual conversation. I can't believe we've been living next door for months. Joe's seen more of you than I have. But after love picked up on her husband's poorly hidden interest in another woman, Natalie met a gruesome end. With Joe being Joe, it didn't take long for him to lock in on another unwitting object of his affection. Q librarian Marianne Bellamy, Joe's boss and literature-loving dream girl. She was a bit icy to him at first, but after connecting over similar childhoods, she eventually warmed up to him. So you aren't the only person who's haunted by shame. Number nine, Joe killed Marianne's ex. Other than being, you know, a married man, one of the obstacles keeping Joe from being with Marianne is her controlling ex-husband. I'm, I'm Ryan Goodwin. If I look familiar, Channel 3 News. Together, Ryan and Marianne have a daughter, Juliet. Her history with substance use disorder gives Ryan the legal upper hand in the custody battle. After a court hearing, he leaks private photos of Marianne. Did the judge rule against you? Are you surprised? Ryan's taking her away from me. Deciding to be her savior, Joe stalks, attacks, and kills Ryan making way for him and her to run away together. Though things do not go as planned. Surprisingly, this is Joe's only kill that season. Simple overdose is out, but he was wasted, stepped too close to the edge, even took a tragic leap. Someone else had a rising body count though. Joe? What's wrong? I think we need to go to couples therapy. Number eight, love almost killed Marianne. Come in. Yeah, no, I should probably. If you have any self-respect, you'll come in here so we can speak like adults. Love is the primary killer in season three, leaving Joe to clean up her murderous messes. First, she killed Natalie because she was a threat to her marriage. Then she attacked and imprisoned Gil after he admitted to exposing Henry to measles. During their swinger night, Carrie and Sherry overhear Love yell that she killed Natalie prompting the Quinn Goldbergs to tussle with Madre Linda's power couple and lock them in a plexiglass prison. She even tries to kill Theo, who fortunately survives. When she realized her husband was obsessed with Marianne, she planned to kill her. Mom? Hey. I have to pee. Okay, so you're almost done, okay? Give me five minutes. I'm just but after seeing Marianne's daughter, Juliet, love had a change of heart and let the single mother go. Marianne? Um, you and your beautiful daughter, you need to run, disappear. Ryan is just the beginning of what he's willing to do. Number seven, Joe killed and framed Love. Before Marianne arrived at the house, Love drugged Joe with aconite, paralyzing him. Oh no, 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 no. After her enlightening encounter with the woman her husband planned to leave her for, Love decided to kill him. But thinking ahead, Joe took adrenaline to counteract the paralytic, and it took effect just in time for him to murder his wife. I'm sorry, it had to come to this. Since the big reveal in season two, love seemed like the perfect match for Joe. She accepted and even embraced his dark side because she had one too. Where's Candace? What happened? I took care of it. But Joe hates that side of himself and in turn couldn't love love. Why don't you love me anymore? A happy ending just isn't in the cards for him. Could he find true love in season four or will he continue being his stalker self?
Number 6. Joe Staged His Own Death To officially end his tenure in suburbia, Joe made sure there was nothing left of his life as a husband and father. He tied up loose ends by framing love for all the murders, including his own. That's right, we can't get into too much detail, but let's just say that Joe went so far as to leave some evidence in order to fake his own death. He also planted other pieces of supposed evidence that would point to love as the serial killer preying on the people of Madre Linda. Remember, you can, you get, can get off, off the, the hamster wheel at any time. You just have to be willing to burn it to the ground. After emailing a typed confession, he set the house ablaze and limped away to start a new life. Number 5. Joe Abandoned Henry If I go down too, what happens to our son? In order to truly begin again somewhere else, Joe had to leave baby Henry behind. As someone still dealing with his own serious abandonment issues, this was probably the hardest decision he had to make. But he made the right choice protecting his son from the crime-ridden legacy of the Quinn Goldbergs. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Joe left him on the doorstep of his former library co-worker Dante and his husband Lansing, who previously babysat Henry. At the end, we see a slightly older Henry happily playing with his new dads. Joe also left a letter for his son to read when he's older. But will he come back for Henry before he reads it? Someday when he's old enough, he can read the rest of the note. But that's between him and me. Evidently, becoming a father changed him, which is something likely to be explored in season four. Number four, Joe went to Paris looking for Marianne. The final scene of the season three finale sees Joe in Paris, France, Marianne's birthplace, and the city she said she'd flee to with Juliet. All I know, mon amour, is I'll search the world if I have to. I will find you." Yeah, he's still very much hung up on the beautiful librarian and traveled to the City of Lights hoping to reunite. But Love told Marianne that Joe was a murderer, so the chance of her taking him back is slimmer than slim. Why would Joe… To protect you. Because he's obsessed with you. No, I saved you. I did a good thing. Plus, following her overseas is more than a little creepy. The season 4 trailer shows Joe approaching a visibly unsettled Marianne in a market seemingly chasing after her, and having a brief but heated confrontation. You're a murderer, Joe. You're wrong about me. Number 3. Introducing Professor Jonathan Moore Allow me to introduce myself. Every season of You has been set in different locations. New York, Los Angeles, the California suburbs, and now Europe. Though we ended with Joe, or Nick, in Paris, season 4 places him in London under another identity, Jonathan Moore. Professor Jonathan Moore. Why are you here? In the trailer, the scenes with Marianne have a muted tone, suggesting their interaction may be presented in flashbacks. It's possible that Joe caught up to her in Paris where she rightfully rejected him and he went searching for love elsewhere. We're not sure why he's in London, but it looks like he's putting his literary knowledge to good use as a professor, likely teaching English literature. Turns out teaching's fun and London's not so bad. Number 2. New Victims and Potential Killers Unfortunately, with friends in high places, there usually come others attempting to climb that social ladder. With a new setting comes a slew of new faces, and season four sure has a lot of them. In every season, Joe is forced to interact with a friend group of entitled socialites, influencers, entrepreneurs, and generally snobby people. I fell in with the most insane damaged people on earth. Season 4's Gossip Girl-esque cast includes all of the above along with college students, royals, artists, authors, and a murderer who earned the moniker the Eat the Rich Killer. Naturally, Joe finds another woman to obsess over, stalk, and spy on through windows. This season, it's Kate, an art gallery director who is immediately suspicious of this Professor Moore. Hello. No. No, I am not interested. Nope. Not interested. I don't want to know. Oi! Where did you go? Why does the universe keep doing this to me? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Characters Who Could Make an Appearance 
Other than Joe, Marianne is the only character returning from season three. Or is she? Since he faked his death, the survivors and Madre Linda won't be looking for Joe. But he told Henry, This isn't forever. Likely implying he plans to go back for him. It's highly unlikely that Love escaped the burning house, though she could make a ghostly appearance like Joe's previous victim, Beck. Why are you here? You've actually lost a lot of blood today, Joe. Then there's the mystery surrounding Ellie, who was briefly mentioned in season three. Less than ideal to steal, of course, but Ellie needs cash, and I can't touch Quinn funds for fear of them finding out where she is. Will Joe still send her money from London? In a flashback, we see when young Joe tracked down his mom and learned that she had another kid, his half-brother. Could he come looking for Joe or vice versa? In the world of you, Almost anything is possible. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.